Hello and welcome to this brief tutorial video on how to properly migrate from an earlier version of the Wonderware historian to the latest version as of the recording of this video which is the Aviva historian version 2020. Now for this tutorial we're going to be following this particular tech note that was provided by Aviva support and the tech note is tech note uh, TN3066 and the title is migrating the historian runtime database to the historian uh, 2017. This is still applicable uh, uh, even though we are migrating to the latest version which is 2020. Now what I've done is I've just uh, went through and I've taken out the relevant parts that we need and I just put it here. These are our SQL queries that we'll need to run uh, once we migrate the database successfully. Now this system right here is a virtual machine and it is the new historian. Now before we begin the migration process, let's first verify that the, the new historian was installed correctly and configured correctly. Now right now there are no tags in the database. It is a fresh installation. There are no serious critical errors or warnings that we need to deal with. We have one here but that's that's not a problem and all of the modules are green and show the status of started. All right, so at this point, we know that the historian is running as it should be. Um, it's currently running. We have a license status of valid. If I, if you install your license, you should see that. Okay, we're going to minimize that. And the next thing that we want to take a look at is, okay, it's it's created its history block, so we're good to go. Now let's move on to the original historian. Now this is the original historian. It's another virtual machine and like uh, verifying on the uh, new historian we're going to open up the SMC and we're going to take a look and make sure that it is also the the original historian is running without any fatal or critical errors and warnings that we need to take notice of. Uh, we take a look and we see there's 87 tags here but in yours obviously it will be more um, and all of the modules are green and show a started status. Now once we verify that we move on and we we check to see you know we, we put some tags on a trend chart or something like that or you can open up the SQL management studio and look and see if there's data uh, with specific tags. Uh, this is to verify that once we have successfully migrated to the new historian we need some tags to show that we are getting old you know data from the old system. Uh, I mean from old tags we can see it so I've chosen three tags here and a start time or a duration period and this will be my test to ensure that I've successfully migrated the old tags over and I can actually read the data. Now once we verify that we also go to and we take a look and verify that we do have history blocks to move over. Um, in this case it's on my C drive historian data and circular. Okay, so we've got history blocks. We verified that the historian is good to go. Now let's back up the database. So we'll open up the uh, SQL Management Studio. We'll select the runtime database and right click, go to tasks, and back up. And we'll ensure that we are backing up the runtime database. It is a full database backup. Uh, the component is the database. And down here in the backup type, we're choosing disk. And I'm going to remove this because I backed it up earlier and I'm going to click on add to add another source or a backup destination. I'm going to click here to the button and I'm going to navigate to some folder on my drive where I can easily find it. Now I'm going to select this because I did this earlier. Um, when you name your file, uh, be sure to include the .bak extension and put it again, put it in a place where you can easily find it. OK, click on OK, uh, select OK again, OK, verify our selection, we're good to go. And because I already have a backup file there, I, I'm going to have to select overwrite uh, all existing backup sets and then simply click OK. Now if everything goes successful, the system will tell you it's done success successfully, click OK and now you can minimize or close this. Now at this point, the next step would be to copy the file uh, to your other system. Uh, to the new historian. In this case, um, my new historian is called uh, historian underscore INS and I'm connected to the C drive with the C, uh, C dollar share and I copied that backup file to a folder on that node. 
Now we've got the file there so now let's move on uh, to the new historian. So now on the new historian now the first thing that we're going that we that we need to do is to open up SQL Management Studio. Once we open up SQL Management Studio let's locate the current runtime database and I'm just going to simply right click on it and say delete. I will get the delete object dialog box and I'm going to uh, make sure this is uh, checked delete and delete backup and restore history information for the database and I'm going to close existing connections and I'm going to say OK. Now again and to, in order to do this you're going to need uh, SQL admin level access to this so you need to be an admin to do this in the SQL server. Now once that's gone I'm going to restore the database by selecting databases here I'm going to right click and I'm going to select restore database. Now once it comes up here I'm going to restore from a device in this case it's going to be a file I'll just click on the add button and I'm going to navigate to where my file is located. I'll select my backup file, simply say OK here, and I have my backup file and this is the database that I shall be restoring. And select OK. Now depending on how large your database is, it may take a little while or it may take a long while. Now once that's successful you'll get the dialog box and just simply select OK and you'll see that the new runtime database is there. Now the next step while the runtime database is selected select the new query button here and that'll bring up the new, the new query uh, uh, little canvas area here and I'm gonna go to my little word pad and I'm going to select everything. I'm gonna copy it and this is the information from the tech note and I'm going to paste it in. Now key point here where it says set computer name this is what I had to change this is my new historian and this is my old historian all it's saying here is update this uh, this particular table okay or this this column or whatever and you're updating this thing to with the new information that's all and up here you're just going to just put your cursor right here at use runtime and you're just simply going to say uh, just click this button called execute. Once that's done you take a look down here and verify that there are no errors warnings or anything like that and everything was successful. When that is done you can close uh, SQL management, uh, management Studio and you can also close your word pad or your text file and the next thing is to go to the configurator utility once you go to the configurator utility you'll notice that the historian is no longer configured so you'll select server and simply select configure and let it go through the process now once that is successful you'll notice that the uh, check mark here and there's a green circle and that means it's configured so we don't need to do anything else we'll just simply close the dialog and exit out the warning uh, box there and we should be good to go now the last thing to do before we reboot and let's go and copy some history blocks so we'll go to our uh, previous node and I'll just go to the shared drive and I'm gonna to navigate to where I saw my history blocks and I'm gonna copy all of them and I'll copy copy them to my new history block location and I'm gonna replace maybe one uh, because it was uh, labeled the same and once that is done I'm just simply going to restart the computer now once the computer has successfully rebooted let's open up the systems management console or the administration administration utility 
and we should see the system slowly come back online and uh, with any uh, luck we shouldn't have any fatal errors or critical errors or warnings or anything like that and as you can see everything is coming back online we have all greens and everything has it shows a status of started um, now let's head over let's take a look at, at the tags under data acquisition and now we have a bunch of tags that are now in the system we we'll check up status and we now have the same amount of tags as we have on the original now let's verify that we are actually seeing data let's connect to our local historian we're gonna pick a couple of tags uh, actually the same three tags that we want it to utilize as our test and we're going to go and to that same time frame that was on our test bed or eh, close to it from a.m. to p.m. and we should see data and we do see data that concludes this, this tutorial video on how to migrate from an earlier version of Wonderware Historian to the latest version as of this video, Aviva Historian version 2020. Thank you.